Hello, welcome to my talk all about the fruits. This talk is the first part of the talk on boundary element method for wave structure interaction with a focus on establishing the dynamic equation for the structure motion in waves. In this talk, I will make a comparison and the transformation between the dynamic equation of frequency domain and of time domain. Then a simple example of a cylinder structure is presented with the analysis result of the boundary element method, including added mass, damping coefficient, wave exciting force, the response amplitude operator, RAO, as well as the time series of the heave motions in an irregular wave based on solving the time domain equation and the transform from the frequency domain result. If we obtain the forces at the moment based on the radiation and the diffraction potentials, we can then construct the dynamic equation for the structure motion based on the Newton's second law of motion. For translational motion, surge, sway, heave, and for the rotational motion, lower, pitch, and the yaw respectively. If we in a component form, we can write the dynamic equation as this. Here, the force Fi is the total hydrostatic and hydrodynamic forces, including hydrostatic forces Fs, the radiation forces Fr, and the wave exciting forces Fex. And the mass matrix is given as this. Here M is the mass of the structure. I, Ij is the moment of inertia of the structure calculate as this. And the x, g, y, g, and z, g are the coordinates of the center of gravity in the reference coordinates. In this slide, the first order hydrostatic and hydrodynamic forces are summarized. More details can be seen in my talk on boundary element method for wave structure interaction, part 3. The hydrostatic forces are given as the net hydrostatic forces due to the structure motion away from its equilibrium state. As see this equation 1. Here, the subscript I equals to 1 to 6 corresponds to the 6 degrees freedom motion and the long zero hydrostatic distorting forces coefficient Cij are given as this. It should be noted sum of the coefficient would vanish if the structure have symmetries about its axis. For instance, a vertical cylinder would be symmetric about the x-axis and about the y-axis. The radiation force are given as this in the equation 2 in terms of the added mass Aij and the damping coefficient Bij due to the wave radiation, defined as the real and the imaginary part of the radiation force component Fij. Here, it should be noted that in the radiation force, the parameter i here is the imaginary unit, while the subscript i indicates the motion mode equaling 1 to 6 here. The wave excitation is given based on the Hasekind relation in the equation 3. Here we can see 
that the wave excitation can be calculated if the radiation potentials are served, while the scattering or diffraction potential may not be necessary to be served, so for the reason of reducing computation effort. In the frequency domain, if we have a complex amplitude Qcj of the motion, then the velocity and the acceleration can be expressed as this. These expressions can be understood that the velocity has a phase difference of 90 degrees with regard to the motion with the imaginary unit I here, while the acceleration has a 180 degrees phase difference with regard to the motion. If we substitute the hydrostatic and hydrodynamic forces into the equation of the structure motion, the hydrodynamic equation of 6 degrees freedom motion of the structure in frequency domain can be given as the mass spring damper format under the action of sinusoidal forces. This term represents the mass term. This is the damping term, and this is the restoring term. Wave excitation is the forcing term. And the parameters are described as it is. And this equation can be written in this simple form with the capital Cij defined as this. And using the boundary element method, this important terms can be calculated. To solve the radiation potential and the diffraction potential, if it is needed, we can use the commercial boundary element method, such as the commercial software WAMIT. ANSYS AQUA or use the open source NEMO or the in-house DEM code. After solving the relevant potentials, we can calculate the forces acting on the structure. And then the dynamic equation for marine structure can be served to obtain the motion amplitude. Cj as this. To represent the result better, we normally use the response amplitude operator RAO calculate as this. Here, A is the wave amplitude. That means the response amplitude operator is a motion amplitude in a unit wave. This response amplitude operator is a complex response, which would depend on the wave frequency omega and the wave instant angle beta. In this slide, the establishment of the frequency domain equation in a linear dynamic system is discussed. In the real world, the physical parameters are all time dependent. For instance, under an action of a sinusoidal force, the system response would be a sinusoidal response of the same frequency. Then the corresponding motion velocity and acceleration can be calculated as this, based on the Newton's second law of motion, the dynamic system for the structure motion can be given as this in a form of the mass, spring, and the damper format. Here, the added mass from the radiation forces have been taken as part of the total mass. The damping is the radiation damping, and the restoring force 
is from the net hydrostatic forces, and the fourth thing is the wave excitation. So substitute the sinusoidal force, motion, velocity, and acceleration into the physical equation in terms of my. We have the equation as this. If we cancel out the time factor in this equation, we can obtain the frequency domain equation as this. This is exactly the same as the frequency domain equation we used previously. We have seen that the frequency domain equation is derived from the time domain equation. However, when we transfer the frequency domain equation back to time domain equation, we must be careful in doing so. Since in the frequency domain equation for the floating structure, the hydrodynamic parameters, Aij, Bij, and the Fi, are all frequency dependent. You will see the example later in this talk. For example, can we transform the frequency domain equation directly into the time domain equation like this? The answer for this transform is yes and no. For yes, it is because this time domain equation is correct when the forcing Fi is sinusoidal for the linear dynamic system, and thus the whole dynamic system has a single frequency. Therefore, for this specific frequency, the hydrodynamic parameters Aij, Bij, and Fi can be correctly obtained. For no, it is because we may often need to examine different forcing, for instance, the nonlinear forcing, and this is the time domain equation used for. For a system of multi frequencies, the hydrodynamic parameters Aij, Bij, and Fi cannot be given in a correct way. As such, we have to use the time domain equation as this. Here, Aij is the added mass at infinite frequency, while the impulse function, Kij, is the Fourier transfer of the radiation damping coefficient given as this. And in this term domain equation, the forcing term Fi can be any type of forcing. Thus, the term domain equation can be easily changed for accommodating the long linear force or any other types of forces. For many practical wave structure interaction problems, the linear solutions are generally very good and reliable. That's why the boundary element method, for instance, WAMIT, ANSYSAQUA, and some other BM software packages have been regarded as the industry standard. For using the boundary element method, for wave structure interaction. Here, the commercial code WAMIT is used as an example. Step 1 Panelize the wet surface of the structure into many panels, as seen in the figure. You can specify whether the sources or doublets to be distributed on the surface. In most cases, Sources are distributed, while the doublets are only used for some rare cases. For instance, the thin structure and the both sides are wet. 
Step 2, solving the Laplace equation for different potentials using the relevant boundary conditions to decide the strengths of the distributed singularities, sources, and the doublet. For achieving that, you need to specify the wave frequency, wave instant angle, and the water depth. Step 3. For calculating the forces and the moment acting on the structure, you need to specify the reference point, for instance, the center of the gravity. Step 4. For solving the structure motion based on the Newton's second law of motion, and then the response of the motion, RAO, you need to specify the mass matrix, center of gravity, and the motion mode. For instance, whether it is fixed or floating. In the next two slides, some results are given for a cylinder under the wave action. The cylinder has a radius of 3 meter and the draft 1.5 meter, see the figure. Its displacement is 42.41 cubic meters. We discretize the wet surface of the cylinder into the small panels. Here, the panels are very coarse for the purpose of illustration. For this specific structure, it had symmetry about x axis and about y axis. As such, the heave would be independent of other motions. And this can be seen from the restoring coefficient C34 and C35. Both are zero since the symmetries about x axis and y axis. And the boundary element method would give the result as this. The added mass, you can see in the small frequencies, the added mass changes quite a lot, but it becomes a constant when omega is very large. Hence, we can say the added mass at the infinite frequency would not be zero. Radiation damping coefficient is given as this, it is zero at both very high and low frequencies. It reaches the maximum at the southern frequency. And the wave excitation is a monofunction decreasing with the wave frequencies. Here, the heave response RAO is given as this, and from the figure, we can see the resonance of the heave motion happens at the frequency 1.8 radius per second, corresponding to the wave period 3.49 seconds. At the resonance, the RAO is about 2.2. .2. So, in the shorter wave at high frequencies, the heave response is very small here, and this can be understood. The cylinder might not move in the very short wave. In the long wave, the response of the heave motion is a unit. This means, in the long wave, the cylinder rises with the wave. In this plot, a comparison is made for the solution of the heave motion in time domain in an irregular wave, and the motion is transformed also from the frequency domain response. So it can be seen these two time series are identical in the wave of average period 5 seconds and the significant wave height 1 meter.